the next few lessons are going to be on solubility. So we're looking specifically at the ability of a compound to dissolve in another in a water or another solvent, such as like a hydrocarbon or ethanol. Uh, in this lesson, we'll be focusing on solubility rules for ionic substances. So ionic substances, remember, are uh, a positively charged cation and a negatively charged anion structure. We have a few solubility rules for ionic substances. Clear aqueous solutions of different ionic compounds uh, when they're mixed together and form, uh, can form a precipitate and that means we're going to have something, uh, a solid form. And when this happens we call it a precipitate reaction or precipitation reaction. So when we have two solutions which have a soluble product in them, uh, that means they're clear. When you add them together we're going to have a cloudiness, so we have solid forms and we're going to call it a precipitation reaction. Uh, precipitation reactions don't occur when two electrolyte solutions are mixed, but form, uh, but only if one of them, when they're mixed together, form a chemical reaction to form an insoluble so, uh, product. So in these cases here, we have insoluble products. We add two solutions together. There's a chemical reaction between them, and they form something that uh, forms a solid and comes out and looks like a murkiness in, in the water. Uh, if a solution of ammonium nitrate, which we wrote here, and sodium carbonate there are mixed together, no precipitates produced because uh, the products in it can be dissolved in water. So neither of them is completely insoluble in water. So there's some insolubility like always, but mostly it's soluble. And the chemical reaction here, we have an aqueous solution, remember? Aqueous solution, mix them together we get this compound here in aqueous solution because it's being dissolved and this compound here in aqueous solution again because it's being dissolved. So if a solution of silver nitrate is added to sodium chloride, a white solid uh, is precipitated out. So silver chloride is this one and it precipitates immediately and we can see in the picture there just adding a drop will make it form the precipitate, a white one. And this silver chloride is insoluble, or actually it's very slightly soluble. Nothing is never insoluble. Um, it's slightly soluble, but mostly it's not, which is why we get the white cloudiness. And the equation can be written like this. We have aqueous solution again, mixed with another aqueous solution. But this case, we have a solid one, so we need to write down it's a solid. And the other product is an aqueous solution. So this bit is the white that we see. Some cation anion combinations are completely soluble and therefore we will never get a precipitate. So if they're soluble, that means we're not going to have any solids in there and therefore it's not a precipitation reaction. So when we write the chemical equations, we need to make sure we write down the states they're in. So we write G in italics for gas, L for the liquid, S for the solid, AQ for the aqueous. And when we do this, we need to make sure we put it for each um, chemical compound, so we know that when we look at the chemical reaction, we can see if it's turned into a precipitate or it still stays in aqueous solution or vice versa. Uh, so when we put, uh, when we dissolve a substance in water, it means it's going to dissolve sometimes and therefore it's going to not perform a precipitate because it's not a solid. When we add them together, sometimes there's a chemical reaction involved and then the, the ions are going to join together, form an insoluble compound, and this is what we call a precipitation reaction. And when we write them down in the chemical equation, we just need to make sure we put down either if it's aqueous solution with an AQ, or S if it's a solid. So we can move on to some questions now. Question one, which of the following salts would be completely soluble in water? So the first one, uh, CaCO3B, uh, it forms a white insoluble compound when present in water, so therefore it's not going to dissolve in water, so it's incorrect. So the lead sulfate is present as a white precipitate in water, and therefore it's also not soluble, so it's not this answer. Uh, the copper hydroxide is present as a blue precipitate in water, and therefore it's insoluble, so it's not this answer. And ammonium salts are always soluble in water, and this is because of the solubility rule, like dissolve like. So uh, the ammonium salts uh, form a polar 
interaction with the water and therefore it is correct because it's going to dissolve in water. Question two, which of the following salts will be insoluble in water? So first of all, A, uh, this has a sodium in it. So all group one elements are soluble in water. Therefore, this one's not going to be the answer. Magnesium sulfate dissolves in water to form magnesium ions and sulfate ions. So therefore it's soluble as well. And again, this one contains the sodium, Na, and therefore all group L one elements are soluble in water. So it's not this answer. And we're left with silver bromide. And this one forms a precipitate, uh, a yellow one in water. So C is the correct answer in this case. Question three, which of the following ions are spectator, spectator ions in the chemical reaction? Can you remember what spectator ions are? Um, they're ones that aren't participating in the reaction. So here we have uh, sodium sulfate in aqueous solution and we're going to put it together with barium chloride in aqueous solution and we're going to form uh, NaCl, so sodium chloride aqueous and barium sulfate which is a solid. Um, so in this case really if it's aqueous solution they're going to just form ions in it so really nothing has happened here. So uh, barium and the sodium um, are involved because the barium here is forming the precipitate so it's involved but the sodium is a spectator ion so it can't be A. B, sulfate and the sodium, we just said sodium is a spectator ion but the sulfate is binding to the barium to form the precipitate so it can't be B either. Barium and chloride, we just said barium is participating in the reaction forming the solid here so it's not this one so it must be Na and Cl because they're not really reacting they're just moving about in the water and not forming really any new products. So D is correct. Four, predict whether a precipitation reaction will occur when uh, PbNO3 and the NH4Cl solutions are mixed together. So the lead chloride that's going to form when we mix the two together, so this one is going to be a spectator ion and the Cl is going to be a spectator ion, oh, sorry, the NH4 is going to be a spectator ion. We're going to have PbCl binding together, forming, forming a bond and causing it to precipitate out. Finally, question five, predict whether a precipitation reaction will occur when uh, KNO3 and CuCl2 are mi mixed together. No precipitation is formed because we know that NO3 is dissolvable in water. Cl uh, chloride ions are dissolvable in water, and when Cu, the copper and the NO3 bind together, it's not going to be dissolved in water because they'll stay together, stay separate as ions. Similarly, with the potassium and the chloride atoms. So, so just remember, precipitation uh, reactions are when you have a chemical reaction between two ions, and the new product is insoluble in water, so it's going to form a solid that you can see and therefore it's considered insoluble.